So the title is Assessing the Readiness of Filipino uh, uh, MRA, Supported Professions to Participate in the Mobility of Skilled Labor in the ASEAN. This, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, this was written uh, by uh, a team uh, composed of Dr. Paolo, John Paolo Rivera of the Asian Institute of Management, uh, Dr. Cynthia Pudia, who is the Associate Dean of uh, the College of Business at De La Salle, and, and yours truly. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, it's an introduction. Um, Mutual Recognition Arrangement, or MRAs, are meant for uh, to facilitate skilled labor mobility in the region. And why do we need skilled labor mobility? Because that's one of the pillars of the ASEAN Economic Community to make the region uh, uh, competitive and, and establish a, uh, a single production a base in the region. Next slide, please. Uh, skilled labor mobility is part of movement of natural persons, okay? And this is one of the modes of supply under the General Agreement on Trade and Services and in the ASEAN, the ASEAN Framework Agreement on Trade and Services. It covers natural persons who are at either service providers or who work for a service supplier. So movement of natural persons is different from temporary movement or temporary migration of laborers. And the ASEAN uh, documents are very clear about the uh, ASEAN framework for trade and services. And, and it's really meant for movement of natural persons to facilitate trade in services. Next slide, please. So MRAs is meant to uh, work for the adoption of best practices and standards in and qualifications in the region and to make sure that the, uh, uh, the qualifications of uh, professionals or skilled professionals in the region are comparable. Okay. Next slide. So, so far we have eight mutual recognition arrangement in ASEAN, okay? Uh, engineering services, nursing services, architectural services, serving qualifications, dental practitioners, medical practitioners, accountancy, and tourism professionals. So these MRAs are meant to provide recognition mechanisms on how to recognize equivalences of registration, licensing requirements, reciprocity requirements, as well as education and, 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 and experience. So that with this uh, recognition mechanisms, okay, that will facilitate uh, movement of skilled professionals within the region. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Before we, I go to the point of inquiry, I, I would like to just make a, a, a very important note, okay? Uh, Mutual recognition arrangements are the necessary conditions for mobility of skilled professionals. There is a sufficient condition, and that sufficient condition is that domestic regulation should allow their entry. Okay? So even if our professionals are comparable, with uh, other professionals in the region, if other ASEAN member states are not willing to allow entry, then that's it. Now, given that, you know, people were asking me, so why study mutual recognition arrangements? Well, because there are human resource implications under MRN. 
So the uh, continuing uh, education, continuing professional education, and other uh, requirements are not only meant for compliance, but rather meant to improve the human resource development of this country. So even if we have an MRA, but other countries are not willing to allow entry, it's still good for the Philippines to improve its human resources through education, through uh, various experiences, and continuing professional education. Next slide, please. So that's it. Okay, so the general objective is to explore how how the Philippines can prepare its skilled professionals to take advantage of participating in the ASEAN labor market, given existing MRAs and the establishments of the ASEAN economic community, allowing for easier labor mobility subject to domestic regulations. So uh, we have studied uh, the following uh, professional groups accountancy, medical, medicine, architecture, engineering services, and tourism. Next slide, please. So uh, we have seen, okay, uh, uh, the three uh, categories of these uh, professions. Uh, the highly regulated dental services, nursing services, and medical uh, practitioners uh, for obvious reasons because uh, this involves lives, okay? And then the regulated ones, uh, accountancy, architecture, and engineering services, and unregulated uh, profession, and that is tourism uh, of professionals. Next slide, please. So the specific objectives, okay, explore the contributions of MRAs in improving the quality of professionals in ASEAN. So let me emphasize that. So this one, this study is meant, okay, to use mutual recognition arrangements as an avenue for improving the human resource development of uh, professionals in ASEAN and in particular in the Philippines. To review best practices among identified professional groups in the Philippines that can be shared with other professionals so that they can attain regional and international comparability. Identify the challenges facing Filipino professionals in complying with their respective MRAs and to create policy recommendations that can enhance uh, best practices and address the challenges of Filipino professionals. Next slide, please. So the significance of the studies I said is not only to contribute to the mobility of skilled professionals in the region and to make it uh, uh, competitive in trade, okay? but to contribute, this study is also meant to contribute to the various ways we can create human resource uh, in this country in terms of social capital, in terms of human capital, and in terms of uh, uh, knowledge capital through education, training, graduate education, and continuing professional uh, education. So as I said, we would like to emphasize the importance of the human resource development dimension as a critical aspect of MRA compliance and competitiveness. Next slide, please. So this is our framework. We have internal factors uh, that contribute to the readiness of Filipino professionals in participating in the movement of natural persons. Uh, this includes uh, education, assessment and uh, examination, continuing professional development, experience, accreditation, certification, and licensing, research, and publications, okay? So 
our representative of Commissioner Reyes can uh, articulate this uh, more in details. And then, of course, we have external factors, uh, mostly on mutual recognition. So the agreement of uh, member states to recognize the various uh, internal factors in various economies. And then you have transnational in issues, uh, intention to participate, okay? So, you know, we have several, uh, several uh, professions and there are only eight in a span of more than 15 years that uh, were agreed upon because it takes an intention and political uh, leadership on the part of uh, the governments to participate in this uh, discussions, as well as the private sector and the professions. Uh, next slide, please. So the methodology is a, uh, a library research. Uh, okay, so we have literature review and analysis of documents. And then uh, from this uh, documents, okay, we have the first draft. And this first draft was given to uh, you know, potential key informants for the validation workshop, okay? And uh, so to encourage them to participate, okay? So we really produce, okay, the first draft of the paper, okay? It's not only an outline, but the real first draft. And then from there, we have a workshop identifying the issues. And then of course, whether they agree or disagree with our uh, analysis, and from that, uh, we assessed the readiness of Filipino professionals and came up with policy recommendations for uh, enhancement of best practices and address the challenges faced by Filipino professionals to be MRA compliant. Next slide, please. So the val validation workshop, I don't know when was this done. Okay, this was... Uh, I think a year or two years ago, okay? So we have various professional groups for accountancy. We have representatives from De La Salle uh, uh, Department of Accountancy and the USD College of Accountancy. For medicine, we have a representative from the Philippine Medical Association. For ar architecture, we have Palafox Associates. For engineering, we have the Philippine Institute of Chemical Engineers and the College of Engineering of Dallasal University. And for tourism and hospitality, we have the Lyceum of the Philippines University College of International Tourism and Hospitality Management and AIM Conference Centers, Manila, Raja Travel Corporation, and AIM, uh, Dr. Andrew Stan Center for Tourism. Next slide, please. So what are the discussion points? On faculty, for somewhat uh, uh, comparable, but uh, of course, even if we are comparable, as I said, uh, this is not meant for just compliance or comparability. It's really how to improve. So we are just uh, meeting uh, the minimum requirements for, for teaching, okay? which is a master's degree, and not all of our uh, college professors have master's degree, okay? Only, in fact, for PhD, it's even worse. We only have, what, 13% of our um, faculty members in uh, the 2,000 or more higher educational institutions have uh, master's degree, uh, has, uh, what do you call this, a doctorate degree. For master's degree, I think it's 33%, okay? So, I mean, 65%, okay, two thirds of our faculty members are still undergraduates, okay? So, but uh, according to our discussion, okay, uh, some of the best uh, schools are comparable with regional standards. Next slide, please. On curriculum, okay, again, we are comparable with re regional and international standards because we follow uh, you know, uh, the international standards, okay, and these are recognized by international bodies. Next slide, please. Now, this one is a, uh, okay, on uh, continuing 
professional education or continuing professional development. So the key informants felt that it's too regulatory and there is a need for liberalization. In fact, my take on this is that, uh, yes, we are complying. We have continuing uh, professional education. In fact, we have legislated or mandated that uh, uh, it is a requirement for the, the renewal of licenses to have continuing professional uh, education. So the criticism there is not uh, whether we lack or uh, we have uh, CPE, but rather what uh, the composition of this continuing professional education. So I think we are, uh, we can further exploit this opportunity to improve, for example, our research and our innovation, okay, among our professionals. And that's part of CPE. It's not only attending seminars and getting credits. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, on research, okay, uh, I think we're lagging behind, okay. Uh, we are weak in research. There's no uh, weak research culture, a lack of scientists. Uh, this is part of enhancing knowledge capital. So although we are good in human capital because our uh, uh, because of the licensure examination and the uh, bachelor's degree, but in terms of knowledge capital, the creation of new knowledge done through research, publication, okay, and graduate education, uh, we're lagging behind. I don't know. We have some statistics on this. Thank okay. you. A per senator that uh, the Philippines lacks 19,000 scientists in research and development. Okay, I don't want to quote another senator. This is uh, live. Okay, about uh, uh, the criticism of this uh, senator on the, the value of research. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a deployment. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, OFWs. And these are uh, remittances. Okay, next slide. And this is the most important slide. Okay, uh, here. Uh, related to uh, our topic on research and the formation of knowledge capital. This is a, uh, the number of publications in Scopus journals. These are index journals. Okay, uh, for a span of more than four, 20 years okay from 1996 to 2070 look at accounting we boast that we have the best accountants in the region if not in the world and yet we are only producing 146 compared to singapore which is a small economy of 803 publications malaysia 915 even a smaller uh, country than the philippines okay so um, architecture 17, the highest is Singapore, 588. In chemical engineering, the same thing. Uh, engineering, uh, the same pattern. Medicine, in medicine, we have a lot, okay, 6,952. Uh, this was done by uh, the doctors from the UP College of Medicine uh, and also from uh, PGH as well as from the University of Santo Tomas, okay? But you know, 6,952 is nothing compared to the 54,582 produced by, uh, by Singapore, okay? Thailand is producing. And, and this is the reason, you know, some people, uh, tourism has 28, okay? Uh, let, let me uh, discuss this further, okay? There is a, uh, a view among many professionals, okay, and say that research is not important. Research is very, uh, uh, very expensive, which is true. It is expensive. It is also true that not all research will lead to inventions or will lead to innovations or will lead to new products. But having said that, even if it's only 1%, 1% of 
okay, or 10%, okay, of this research, okay, come out to be uh, new inventions or, or innovations. Well, that's only 69 for the Philippines, make it 70. But for Singapore, that's uh, what? 545 new innovations. So that's it. Even if 90% is wasted, the 10% of this research will lead us to innovations and improvement of our production as well as our services. Not to mention, if our faculty members are engaged in research, then the quality of education in this country will improve. So uh, that's my take on this. I'm sure this will be a, uh, a topic of discussion later on, okay? And next slide, please. On licensure examination, so it varies according to professional groups. So what was, uh, what emerged during the, uh, the discussion, a focus group discussion is the appropriateness of allowing fresh graduates to take licensure examination immediately. For other professions, it's allowed. For architecture and medicine, it requires prior work. In fact, by international standards, okay, they require three years of work experience before taking the licensure examinations. But in this country, particularly in, in accountancy, I, I used to be the dean of the College of Business and Economics at De La Salle University, okay? So we take pride, okay, of our fresh graduates and who uh, land in the, the top 10, okay? But uh, many of this, okay, uh, in my previous studies, okay, only 20% of this licensed accountants end up in public accounting. So this licensure examination are not meant really to, for, for them to, to qualify to do auditing and accounting to me okay this is a personal view it's more of a uh, a signal that if you pass this licensure a very difficult licensure examination then you know you are a good worker you you can be a you have a uh, uh, a place in this uh, in the in this uh, in this company, okay? So it is a signal that you are equipped with good qualities. Next slide. Okay, where well, I'm in the summary, okay? As I said, MRAs have compelled professionals to continuously improve on their respective crafts. As I said previously, even if we enter into mutual recognition arrangements, it does not follow that there will be movement of skilled workers or skilled professionals. That is dependent on domestic regulations. Having said that, okay, this requirement stipulated in mutual recognition arran arrangements compelled sending countries to upgrade their educational systems, training, accreditation, certification, licensing, and professional regulatory frameworks to enforce higher standards in the conduct of professional service. So this is something, okay, even if this MRAs will not facilitate movement, okay, the contribution of this, of these MRAs, is to improve our human resources in terms of improving our educational standards, improving our research, improving our continuing professional education, and so forth and so on. Filipino professionals are generally comparable with other ASEAN professionals. 
I mean, as I said, we are comparable, but we're not working for comparability. We want to improve further, okay? We want to go beyond comparability. Next slide, please. So no single ASEAN member states uh, serves as benchmark or best practices. Uh, varying levels of development among ASEAN member states are not yet willing to relinquish full control over their professional standards. Okay, you know, that's why, you know, the, the name uh, Professional Regulatory Commission, okay? Or Regulation Commission. It, it, it's highly regulatory. I'm not questioning the regulations, okay, there. Okay, in economics, okay, there is a basis for regulation. And one of that is what we call asymmetric information. The information that is known by the service providers is not known to the consumers of the service. And that is bad for the consumers because they may get wrong professional advice, wrong professional service. I mean, uh, you've heard of malpractices in the medical profession and the dental profession and so forth and so on. Okay. So this is the basis of regulations to address that asymmetric information. But what we are saying is that, okay, this is it. Okay. We also have to be developmental that our professionals can still improve. In this country, you know, after taking the licensure examination, that's it. We don't take graduate education. Okay, we don't publish because we're already certified. I mean, now that uh, Dr. Celia Reyes mentioned about the Philippine qualifications framework. I think that is the right road huh, to take in the ASEAN uh, qualifications framework, okay? Or what TESDA is doing, certification, not licensing. We have to certify, you know, everyone, but not license because licensing is more, uh, <laughs> not all, okay? There are select, the highly regulated ones, okay? Uh, I am for the licensing of uh, medical doctors, uh, dentists, okay, uh, nurses, of course. But there are some, okay, professions, you know, just to keep their monopoly power, uh, sought Congress to make their profession a regulated one, okay? So, and uh, again, that, uh, we'll discuss that during the open forum. And then generation of knowledge through research stimulates technological development and creation new practices that upgrade human resource practices. We should emphasize the role of research. This country will only move, okay, if we develop knowledge capital. It's not only the work of Chad, it's also the work of PRC to contribute in knowledge building because that's part of nation building. And lastly, as, okay, well, that's it, okay. To sustain this readiness, continuous improvement in education of uh, faculty members handling professional degree programs, not only through development continuing professional development, but also through research and publications, okay? Very, very, okay, uh, because we're lagging behind, okay, uh, on research and development, just to, uh, okay? Uh, the entire publication of the Philippines in Scopus journals for the past 20 years is even lower than the 2018 publication of Singapore. That's something, okay? 
continuing professional development should be developmental, more than rather, okay, more than regulatory. I mean, I I'm not discounting the regulatory function. It is needed. But we also need to be developmental in this continuing professional education and development. Although not all practicable research outputs can generate patents, innovations, and new technologies that can contribute to the development of society in the long run. So with that, thank you very much. I heard the sounds that I have to stop. Thank you. Next slide. I think the next slide is thank you. Okay, well, well the link. Okay. Uh, let me just read this, okay. Uh, because this was funded by the Philippine Apex Study Center Network, and the criticism of the evaluators is that uh, it's too ASEAN focused. Although it's ASEAN focused, most of the ASEAN uh, member states are also members of the Apex. Uh, so, what are the lessons for the Apex economies? Okay, uh, there is a link between MRAs and human resource development. Okay, not only in the development of social capital. But the development of human capital and knowledge capital uh, strengthened the association of APEC universities towards benchmarking of curriculum, pedagogies, and learning standards. Okay, ASEAN is a model here. The ASEAN University Network is benchmarking on curriculum, pedagogies, and learning standards. And to some extent, you know, one of the reasons why these uh, MRAs. Uh, uh, were forged was uh, through the ASEAN University uh, Network. So coming together of regulators and professional organizations should complement the discussions of higher educational institutions. So, you know, it takes a lot of uh, stakeholders to form a uh, mutual recognition arrangement. And not only that, it takes a lot of time and effort. So, uh, next slide. I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope uh, uh, I'll get your uh, reaction later on. Thank you.